What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to Most Street. Today we're going to show you guys the long-awaited post-processing video on how I edit my moto vlogs. I will help you level up your videos and take them from something that looks like this to a higher cinematic production quality that looks like this. This video will show you techniques for editing video and sound, color correction, and of course, color grading. Editing videos is not a hard process at all, especially in a world where video content creation is the main source of entertainment. Almost everyone edits videos on their phone every day. But in order to stand out from the rest of the crowd, you need that magic cinematic quality that everyone loves. I've been editing videos in Adobe Premiere Pro for the past seven years. It is the industry standard video editing tool used by professionals all over the world. It offers high-end features, plugins, and presets, which make it a great choice for those who want to take their video editing skills to a professional level. If you don't have a budget and you're looking for a free editing software, I suggest that you use DaVinci Resolve, which also happens to be a standard for many industries, especially when it comes to color grading. But keep in mind that the free version is missing a lot of tools and features that are only available in the studio version. After I finish my vlog and head back home, I quickly start transferring data into my computer using a card reader and organizing them in a folder with a unique name and date. Once everything is nicely organized, I open my editing software and drag the folders to the project window. The next step will be to create a sequence and sync the sound to the video. Click on the file and choose new sequence from clip. And now that the timeline is ready, you can simply add any clip to the sequence by dragging it. Now go to Sequence, Sequence Settings, and set your frame size to 3840 by 2160, which is the 4K timeline that we will be working with. Make sure that the clip is at the beginning of the timeline for accurate time readings. Drag the audio clip and place it on the bottom audio track. Highlight both the video clip and audio layers with the mouse, right click and choose synchronize, audio, and for track channel, choose mix down. Click OK. The software should be able to process and sync the clips automatically. And if that did not work, you can manually sync the clips. Recorders I use have two built-in microphones that pick up stereo sound meaning left and right. I usually like to use one microphone and double it on both channels because the sound pickup is not equal due to the placement of the recorder. One is usually louder or has more bass and by editing the sound choosing either wouldn't be an issue. To choose a channel left click on the soundtrack and choose audio channels. Let's choose the right channel first. Now let's go back and change it to the left channel and see which one is better. After choosing the channel, I go to Effects, search Multiband Compressor, and drag it to my sound clip. Go to Effect Controls and click Edit under the compressor. This step is not always necessary and it depends on the placement of your recorder and how the sound was picked up. I usually get a muffled sound when I place the zoom in my backpack, and this process helps gain back some of the mid and high frequencies and reducing drone sound. A multiband compressor is essentially an equalizer and a compressor in one. It splits the frequency spectrum into separate bands, meaning you will have compression and overall control over the lows, low mids, mids, and highs. Now I'm not going to go into details of how threshold, ratio, attack, and release work because it's complicated and the whole point of this video is to learn the basics of post-production. You can easily choose a preset from the preset menu and edit it or edit every channel individually by choosing solo, s for every frequency band and adjusting the threshold and gain. The output gain is the general gain of the track where you can increase or decrease the overall volume and by reducing the thresh, you will increase the quieter sounds of the audio track. In the project box, right click new item and adjustment layer, click OK and drag it on top of the video layer. This is where we're going to correct the footage. 
Go to the color tab and make sure you have the adjustment layer highlighted. Generally, I start editing with curves where I set the overall exposure to my liking if needed. A rule of thumb is to keep the low and high peaks from barely touching, zero for blacks, and 100 for highlights. If you see that your midtones are dark, you can simply increase the center of the curve and adjust the rest accordingly. Next step is making sure that I have the right white balance. Under basic correction, you have temperature and tint. Sliding the temp to the right will give you orange and the left is blue. And the tint is either magenta or green. You could leave the footage as is, export it and call it a day, but we tend to add a little more taste to our videos and give it that extra sauce. You see, the color grading process is all about taste. Yes, there are some rules regarding complementary colors and color science for what really attracts a human eye. At the end of the day, art has no rules. In order to shorten the whole process, I've created LUTs and have been using them and tweaking them to fit any footage. A LUT is short for a lookup table, which is in short, a color preset for video. And in general, you can find correction LUTs and color grading LUTs. If you want to manually color grade your footage, you can start with the basic color wheels by adding complementary colors to your highlights, midtones, and shadows. You could also adjust the exposure of every wheel by sliding it up or down. Another great tool is Hue Saturation Curves, where you could choose a specific or range of colors and changing its properties. HSL Secondary is also a powerful tool that I use, which allows you to pinpoint a color and change it or correct it accordingly. If you record it in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you could jump to the export chapter, and if you record it in a 4 by 3 or 8 by 7 aspect ratio, the following step is for you. The whole reason for recording in a 4 by 3 or 8 by 7 aspect ratio is to utilize and correct the full size image sensor. The GoPro 10, for instance, has a sensor size of 4x3, and the 11 and 12 have a taller 8x7 sensor. This means we could correct the footage to our liking in post using a plugin. These cameras automatically shoot and stretch the full image to the profiles that are available on the camera, but they still have that GoPro look that some people like me do not seek. The plugin I found and use is called GoPro FX Reframe. It was created in-house by the developers from GoPro. This plugin was originally created for the 360 GoPro Max and it could also be used for lens correcting GoPro footage. Search GoPro Reframe in Google or use the link in the description below. Make sure to save and close your project before installing it to Premiere. Now reopen your project, go to Effects panel and search GoPro FX Reframe. Drag it to your footage, go to Effect Controls, and then choose Source Image. Click on Source Operations and uncheck Mirror Edges. Open the advanced controls and make sure the motion blur is unchecked. Now to get a perfect rectilinear lens on GoPro footage, the lens curve should be about 60 to 70. Go to the zoom camera and zoom out to the point where you don't see the black edges. And if you zoom out even more, you could really see what the plugin is doing to the image and how it is stretching it and giving us more room on the top and bottom because we shot it in a taller aspect ratio, which was an 8x7 or 4x3. Now that our lens distortion is adjusted, you have the freedom of using the pan, tilt, and rotate, which act like a virtual camera to further adjust the image. You can also offset or slide the image up or down to show more of the bike or more of the road. This plugin is a powerful tool if you are looking to make your footage distortion free and if you want to have the flexibility to adjust everything in post like I usually do. Keep in mind that it also works with any 16x9 footage, for example other action cameras, drones or video cameras. If you would like a full tutorial on this plugin, make sure to watch Abe Kesslevitz. He explains everything in detail. I linked it in the description below. Once everything is done, I go to export and use the following settings. I name the file, choose the export destination. I set the format to H.264, the frame size to Ultra HD. Frame rate is 25 if you live in Europe and 24 for USA and Canada. Performance set to hardware encoding to utilize the graphics card. 
I leave everything here and go down to bitrate, VBR pass 150, audio sample rate 44.1 or 48, but if you use 48, YouTube is going to compress it down to 44.1 anyway, stereo bitrate 384, it could also be mono, and then export. Congratulations, now you know how to edit your mode vlogs. And for those of you who watched this video to the end, thank you. And for my gratitude, I would like to gift you a free LUT to use on your next video. You can find it in the description below. If you have any further questions, make sure to comment them below. And as usual, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video so we can grow together and to create even better content for you. See you in the next one.